What I got here is a piece of that knotweed that I harvested just a little bit earlier. I cut one side so it is slanted and pointy. And if you've never had any experience with knotweed, it's much like bamboo in a sense that it has these hollow cavities and then at the end of each cavity, there is like a little wall that separates each section. So I came down to the bottom, of course, like I said just a second ago, I pointed this end off and now I'm gonna come to the very top of this hollow section and I'm gonna cut that free. So I want this bottom floor in a sense in there. And I'm gonna come up top and I'm just gonna cut that free with my knife. It doesn't matter for this project if we have green or dead wood, as long as we get it cut free in there, we'll be fine. Rough edge doesn't even matter. Now I have a hollow tube with a bottom and a point, and that's important because we can stick this right down in the ground. Now I know I'm probably keeping you in suspense, but what are we doing with all of this and why am I making this contraption? We're actually gonna make some candles. So if we have some wax and we have some type of tube or cylinder like this, it's very simple to make candles. Now, if you can remember yesterday, we made that two ply reverse wrap cordage and that's what we're gonna use as our wick. So I have my candle mold right here. I'm going to take this two ply reverse wrap and just slide it down inside our candle mold. Now, what I want to do at this point is one of two things. I can either trim this up top and work a stick in or what I can do is just guesstimate about that deep it needs to go in, take my knife and cut it free. So this wick now is the identical length of our candle mold. We're gonna come up to the top where I actually began the cordage. Remember we start with that loop, open that loop up just like that and I'm gonna take just a small stick put that inside and then just turn it back down. That's gonna tighten my cordage back up and now when I drop my cordage in, I have something that's gonna keep my cordage centered while I'm making the candle. The reason we keep this pointed end in is we can then drive this down into the ground and that's gonna hold our candle mold in place. But before we go any further, what I'm going to do is I'm just gonna take my knife, I'm gonna stick this in, and I know this is where I wanna do this. So I'm, I'm close to the fire, I'm gonna take my knife and I'm gonna just lightly split this down. Now the only reason I'm doing that is because it's easier to get the candle out then. I'm then gonna take my wick and I'm gonna drop that down, trying to make sure that's as close to center as possible. And now I can take some of this cordage or some of this fiber that I had from the cordage yesterday, pull it apart, and I'm just going to tie it around just to hold this closed. Okay, remember we just split it out, so we wanna just keep that somewhat tight and closed. So I'm gonna put one or two ties on here. This is nothing overly complicated that you have to worry about. So I'm just taking this and I'm just tying this off very simply. Now we can get the wax and pour this on the inside. I just put an old can in the fire and I'm gonna take some golf wax. You can use any kind of wax that you want for this. You don't need a lot. I know that can is a small pinhole on the bottom so we're gonna be leaking some wax. So I'm gonna just throw a little bit extra in for this project. I'm gonna let that melt down and we can fill our mold. Now the biggest thing you wanna take in consideration here is to keep your wick straight. So I like to actually pull that out of the way for a second. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just pour this wax in. And it's all right if you make a mess here, we're in the woods, nobody cares. Let it overflow and then push that wick down in. You really wanna let that overflow for the simple fact if you don't let it overflow when pouring, you can get small air pockets in here and your candle won't mold right. Now as that wax cools, it's gonna condense down. It's important that we top it off. So you can put your wax back on the fire and then just top it off as it goes along. All right, so I'm pretty excited about this candle actually. So what we're gonna first do is we're just going to break this outer stuff off. I'm just gonna cut it free because there's a little bit of wax on it. Be easier than picking around at it. So we're just gonna pull that all the way off. If you feel your mold and it feels warm at all, that's a good chance that there is still hot wax in there. So what we're gonna do now is just pull it out of the ground and then I'm just gonna take this and I'm gonna break the mold away. Remember, this is renewable. I can go and get a ton of this stuff. So now we're gonna just crack this free from all the sides. And now we have ourselves a candle. I can come in and just take the top of this cordage and cut that free to get that stick out. And now I created a candle. So let's go over into an area that's a little bit more dark and less windy and light this thing up and see how it performs. 
All right, so we just came off to the side now. I'm gonna light this. Remember, when you first ignite this, it's gonna take a little bit though because you gotta burn some of that wax off that overflowed onto the wick, just like a normal candle. So it's slowly going right there. Once we get that cooking, we're gonna be solid. So it looks like a double wick right now, but um, that's just because the cordage is coming apart from where we cut it. So that'll burn down and we will have ourselves a nice candle for around camp. You can make these as big or as small as possible. Um, whatever you would like to do with it, um, you know, it's up to you. So it's just a good project. It's something else to put in your toolbox, another skill to have. So I hope you enjoyed this. Give it a shot. Tell me what you think. This was Dan Wallach of Cold Cracker Bushcraft. Check us out at coldcrackerbushcraft.com. And until next video, stay in the woods.